Schultz, just before Frizzell got him, and a leaping interception by Woodson. I think he's throwing it away, and I saw him shoot up out the air, and I oh, said, oh, I know he didn't just do that. And then when we got yeah. to the line, he said, that's my high view. And he's got a problem. Still struggling, now throws it in. Tripped over nothing. Right there. Right here. Right. Right. Coming down and somebody catches my leg. Get back to him. He's like, you just won the national championship. Yeah, still gives me chills when I see that. Y'all see it? That fresh new, fresh out the pack from 97. Just ripped the tag off for y'all, Sweat. Love it. Love it. Big Sammy. Chris Howard. Uh, Look at that. I like the old stadium better. Look, I like how I'm the yeah. old offensive guy on this thing. So, I like that. <laughs> Are we starting off with that Notre Dame, a team that uh, came in with a lot of ball control, man, and milked the clock. A lot of people don't know Jim Coletto was the coordinator, and that's who beat us in 96. So, I think they had our number, Big Sammy. Hey, they had a great game plan, man, to take the air off the ball. See Charles out there missing tackles, you know. Technique, you know. We had to coach that guy up a little bit. <laughs> Eric Mays, Big Zeus. One of the things that they did, though, too, was they – they delayed the snap counts so that we couldn't zone blitz. You see Dre Weathers about to give up a, a big pass right here, getting nosy on that press coverage. You saw that speed, though, Chris. Did you see it? Uh, I don't, that I don't was a pretty good angle, Marcus. That was good. Not possible that, man. You know you should have been over the top on that. <laughs> there you go, Ray. There you go. The, um, well, and so we're, we're still getting used to Herm at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. It's early enough in the season that uh, Herm had taken over after Maddie left to go to Notre Dame. Uh, the end of last, you know, the end of the season before. So you know, he called, he called what? What was this? The third third game for us? Second game? Yeah. And he got me cooked up on that play too. Gave up the first <laughs> touchdown. Of the team. That was a terrible call in the red zone. <laughs> he was trying, to check, trying to check Bobby Brown. He was six six. Ran that post corner. <laughs> Was that their first – was that the first series that they scored on? No, no, I think it was the second one. Second? Yeah. But, but yeah, Robbie, you're right, man. I mean, the first two games we dominated, but we were still getting acclimated. There he goes. Yeah. Chris Howard. And it, it was tough going in, in, the, in the early part of the game. You know, it's funny. As a matter of fact, I barely played in the first half. I didn't really get going until, like, that last series – uh, to seal the game, to run out the clock, like the last maybe nine minutes of the game. Because remember, we fumbled the ball like four times in our own like 30-yard line or something like that. And oh, you got yeah. that to us out. Well, I think too, man. I mean, we – this was a game that was just different. And and Ooh. as you look at the scoreboard, I mean, we're losing in the first quarter. And our defense hadn't given up, you know, very many points all season. Mm -hmm. And then you look up, and now we're we're in a dog fight, for lack of better terms, at home. Right. But I think Brian, man, in that first half, he kept that offense together. Though, what you think, Chris? Yeah, Greasy was uh, was was instrumental in this. And I think everything that we knew about him, as far as being an outstanding leader and, and guys, just kind of uh, following his lead. I mean, it really showed in that next drive because. Again, you know, we weren't known as, as this super high efficient uh, offense yet. But, you know, on this drive, I mean, we went down, we scored. Clarence Williams did his thing. I mean, everybody was just sound on this drive. Yeah. I mean, look at that hole. Well, I mean, the other thing, too, you got um, – you get a pretty young offensive line that this is their first big game that they played together in, right? They were just showing Zeman coming off that chip and sealing out for Clarence. The uh, I mean, those guys. I mean, this was real men football in this game versus you know, uh, uh, big house, big stage, all of that stuff. I mean, there was there was a lot of adrenaline pumping for everybody at the beginning of this for sure. And those those guys up front, you know, Zeman was young, Hutch was young, uh, back 
Mackis was young. You know, those guys um, did a good job holding it together for, you know, for Chris, for all of you guys in the back and, and Greece, giving him time to move around and do what he needed to do. Yeah, well, I tell you what, this drive right here started on their, like, one, two-yard line. They were trying to milk the clock and then hit a couple of plays. And next thing you know, they're on the – inside the, the five-yard line taking the lead, and, and they were just trying to milk the clock. And I think that that drive put everything in perspective for us, like are we going to be like those other four lost teams and give up the ghost, if you will, versus a you know a premier opponent. But I think that drive gave Notre Dame all the confidence that they needed, thinking that they probably, probably could have and should have won that game as you look at those first-half numbers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. God, I forgot about that. The, uh, but I tell you, you know, even, you know, and thinking back and, you know, of course you're, you're kind of bred to, you know, in this sport to think that you're never going to lose a game. You know, we went through enough eight and four seasons that, you know, there were, there were times during games that you, you felt like it was getting away from you. And I, you know, I go back and I think about it, even, in, you know, in a game like this early in the season, you know, we're down Iowa, another one, you know, I don't ever remember having that sense, you know, that, that we were out of it, that, we, that there was no way that we were going to compete and win a game. One of the things, too, and Sammy, you could probably attest to this, but I really think we were just a well-coached, battle-tested team. Look how much time's left in the first half, I mean, in, in the third quarter, and we came back and answered the bell. You know, 24 and, seconds. And that was something Brian did in 96 against Ohio State, you know, that, that I think led into the 97 year. But that team had been through all the wars. We were all friends. You see, I mean, I mean, whether it was offense, defense, guys hugging, and, and it didn't matter who made the big play. We were so well coached that once we got into that locker room, whatever we messed up in, in that first half was going to get corrected, and our and our coaches could make in game decisions instead of you know going with a game plan that wouldn't work, and then they're stuck. They were able to adjust on the fly. Yeah. And then, when you got number two out there, anything was possible. That's a fact. The, um, and, you know, Marcus, you touched on one thing that I think is, is important and maybe as important a, a thing to reflect on and to, and to know about, the, at least from my perspective, and I've voiced this to you guys before. It was one of the most unselfish teams that uh, I was a part of anywhere in my life. Um, I mean, like you said, I mean, Charles had every reason to be, you know, hey, give me the ball, give me the ball. But you, you didn't have to, right? There were plenty of guys out there that deserved uh, a lot of attention. But, I mean, everybody on the field, off the field, I mean, everybody got along really well and had that fight for your brother in the trenches type attitude, right? For Chris Howard, man, I mean – we ran the ball by committee. I mean, you were clearly our number one back. As you see Chris Floyd steamrolling people into the end zone, a guy that was underutilized for his career. 21-14 to start the fourth, right? And Sorry. Then, three turnovers, Sam. Oh. Remember that, Sam? Come on, Jay. Yeah, Come that on, was, Jay. I, I think that was big too, Ray. You know, when you – um three turnovers and, and you can weather that type of storm as a defense, man, like – it wasn't a matter of, oh, we turned the ball over. It was more, hey, let's get them stopped. And uh, that, I think that was everybody's mindset on yeah. that defense. That was like, that was such a change, right? It was on our side of the – Yeah. Three times in the fourth quarter and gave up zero points. That's a national championship defense. That's for sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, look at Josh just eat that guy up. <laughs> he was such a big guy. Yeah. I, that, I mean, this was, uh, this was crazy, man, because – these are the moments where that doubt starts to creep in your head. Like, are we going to do what the teams previously did, right? Or are we going to crack? Because and literally we did on the offensive side of the ball in that last in the fourth quarter, we did everything that you're supposed to do to literally give that game away, right? Yeah. We were not supposed to win that game, giving up three turnovers the way we did. And, and, and again, like you guys said, that's a, that's a national championship defense. When you can stop an offense like that, sudden change it on your thirty yard line. I mean, that's, that's, that's incredible. That's the second that's turnover right there. I want to say though, I fumble. That was you. What? Oh, that's Floyd. Oh, that was Floyd. <laughs> that was me. 
Hey, we got to get Coach Jackson and those fundamentals work. What was, what was that? Terrible handoff. Terrible This right here, though, that did because I don't know if this is the fourth down series, but second and three. Look at see, people don't understand the hidden yard. It's third and two. I think Sam or, or Eric Mays right there trips him up. Then I have to get a piece of his back. But then here comes that fourth down. I mean, I mean, they lined up and said, called a timeout and everything and said, we're gonna line up and run it, stop us. And I'm thinking on fourth and two and a half. Yeah. Gotta got score. Right, fourth round. I I think this, this oh. that right there gave us enough confidence to know that we were a different team and that we could stop anybody and really beat anybody. I think early on, you're talking about a fourth down. What's the place to stand? <laughs> That's it, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, they, now they've had the ball twice on our side of the field on a short field. And look at Sammy stuffing that thing right in the hole. Watch this, right here. Boom! Nowhere to go. The, um... That's good vision right there, Chris. That was some good vision, son. Yeah, it was It was, It was. was supposed to go front side, and uh, that backside crease opened up, man, and I just took it. The but I think, uh, you know, Notre Dame at this point has got to, got to be asking themselves, like, good, good God, what do we have to do? What do we have to do to score, right? Um, get a short field, and then Chris rips off a big one. Our offensive line always find a way to, to close the game. They just close the game. Yeah. Whether it's Chris, what's your mindset? Give me the ball, I'm going to finish it? Uh, don't fumble it. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Don't oh, fumble it. I think I was That's fair. in the doghouse, and so I think everybody else had already fumbled the ball. <laughs> He's got to hold on to the rock. Look at that. I didn't even realize we ran the ball like that on, on, on that final drive. Oh, yeah. Lloyd, Lloyd specifically said, like, when he realized that their punt return team ran out there, he made us stay out there. And he said, run it. And it was funny is when I, we ran the play and I get the first down, I come to the sideline. Lloyd came up to me and said, you should have scored. <laughs> you had your punt return team out there. You should have scored. <laughs> That's great. That was a big one. That game meant a lot to Lloyd for, for a lot of different reasons, and, and you guys know uh, sure. why. And I think that's why you saw him so animated at the end. That was a huge win. It's a huge win, right? Yeah. The, um, big rivalry game, and, um, you know, I think, like you said, you know, having that response 24 seconds into the Second half after having that thing jammed down our throats on the on the last drive of the first half, that's a way to stand up and, and and come back and punch him in the mouth. Sam Swore, that's in your backyard, man. What's it like being from Michigan playing in that in that rivalry, man? To, to me, as an in-state kid, man, that's one of them games that you just you have to win. Uh, I mean, you know, all of the guys is, is for recruiting purposes, and there it is. I mean, when I saw this play on the field, I couldn't believe it, Ray. I don't know what you was thinking, but I was like, oh, my God, did he did he catch it? Did he come down with it? It was just like, wow. I was on – actually, we were in man-to-man -man with two two high safeties helping out, and I was on the right, and we used to move Charles to nickelback. That was one of the geniuses of Jim Herman, and you see Big Joaquin with the pass rush. But Charles was the type of guy, as, as you see the athleticism, but mentally he was on a different stratosphere. The average player says that's going out of bounds. And, and, and watch, watch the honey behind him. Watch the honey behind him. Wait, wait. Watch <laughs> him. <laughs> this is a nasty, nasty get after it, man. And Joaquin closes. But Charles' is mentality just Superman. I mean, he goes up with one. I was on the other side, and I was like, oh, I think we're throwing it away. And I saw him shoot up out the air. And I oh, said, oh, I know he didn't just do that. And then when we got yeah. to the line, he said, that's my Heisman moment. I was like, you think you're going to win it for real? He said, I think that's going to get me in it. That's what he told me. But Sure enough. That's called what Lloyd used to say, unshatterable confidence. <laughs> I mean, just – you're right, right? I mean, that um, 
you did. You just thought it was it, it was out of bounds, and all of a sudden, number two just elevates. He put right? the cape on. He just put the cape on and said, "You know what? I'm different. I'm just different." And, and, oh, and that's how. And, and he and I were roommates the whole year, and he lived that way. He was just a different dude. And and but for him to even time his jump perfectly, one hand. And then most importantly, he stayed in bounds. All that would have went for not if he would have been out oh, of bounds. And he, back, and he backhands it. Yeah. Right? Backhands And all the Our defense collectively, though, to a man was just – I think we all complimented e- each other, too. The deep, the, like the front complimented the secondary. And then the, the, the yeah. linebackers with Sam and those guys were athletic to stop the run and get in past coverage. You see Dahani. As you stated, even Singletary running down there to celebrate. <laughs> About to get us yeah. a high-line warning and penalty. <laughs> we had a horrible schedule, um, to, you know, between playing guys and, you know, having home and away. Um, you know, Big Ten was pretty stacked that year. The, um, I mean, it was a dogfight every week, right? Um But, I mean, I remember, for me, it was the Penn State game. You know, we had that huge matchup under the lights, away on the road. And that first play, Glenn Sachs, McQuarrie, and it was all downhill from there. You know, like I said earlier, I mean, I always – I think back on on that year, and I don't remember having any any doubt, but after after Penn State, it was like, okay, now you – Watch out, because this this team's on a mission. What was remember, this was remember what Bino Cook right? said that Penn State was going to smoke us, and, and and all only people we should send out there was the band. <laughs> Gets my ass. Yeah, he, yeah man, I, that had me fired up right when he said that. <laughs> hey, Lloyd was telling us them stories the whole time. Hey, remember when Lloyd came in there and said uh, he was late to the meeting, and uh, he said, "Hey, I just got off the phone with." Joe Paterno, and I offered to trade Chris Howard, A-Train, Chris Floyd for Curtis Enos, and he wouldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. (laughs) He said, you know what he said? You know what Joe Paterno said? No, thank you. And he hung up. (laughs) (laughs) You know, and Kurt and I played in that big 33 together. Robbie, you played in that 33 the year before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the the whole atmosphere, though, you know, two versus four, you know, place was on fire. Oh, that place! And Robbie, you're from Pennsylvania, right? Yeah, yeah. Had to be a big. Um, yeah, grew up outside of Philly, and um, I think it was like the top twelve recruits left Pennsylvania that year. Wow, that was like Ron Palace and Richie, and um, and I think at that point everybody thought he was going to retire. That was '93. Well, we came out in that first drive and got a field goal. And then, as you stated, watch the top of your screen. Watch Glenn Steele just stay in his pass rush lane. They want to come out with a trick play. I was surprised they didn't just line up and just try to smash Malfus, but they tried to get cute. And I think that play, and the way do you see, I don't know if we're going to see it, but when Daydream, a little backstory on that Daydream hit, this might be uh, coming up pretty soon. But, you know, we came out looking to punish Curtis Enos. Like, I, I, I just yeah. felt like, you know, if we could gang tackle him, stop them from throwing the ball, then I, I think the Penn State team just didn't have enough, man. And mentally, they were out of it. Yeah, I, I, didn't, get, I didn't get Penn State's game plan. I mean, you've got Curtis Enos, uh, a Heisman contender, and they came out passing the ball. Like, I, I didn't understand um, that game plan at all. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm glad they did it because – um, hey, hey, everybody, what I was going to say, Reese doesn't get to run much. You should yeah. highlight that one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, Chris, Chris, you you had mastered that jump cut, man. But man. you and A-Train were smashing them dudes. But, man, we jumped out on these boys 34-0. to 0, And that offensive line, I mean, I think this was our best offensive performance collectively. And when you put Charles at receiver, Greasy scrambling for 40 yards, I mean, it was just – I mean, it looked like they recreated. Yeah, it was. I mean, the I think what the other thing that was unbelievable was remember how bad it snowed there, and the field was covered with snow. And then by the time we came out for game time, 
all the snow and everything was was gone. The field was great, and it the the, the, the turf was just amazing, man. And it just it was just a different feeling in that game that we just felt like we were gonna have a, a very good offensive um, showing that game, and we did. Look at Greasy flipping oh, the field. Oh. Big time play by Greasy. <laughs> that almost looked like half a move back there. We had that kind of athleticism. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. there you go. Thank God, thank God he got a day job, huh? Right? Exactly. I don't know how Penn State lost sight of number two down in the middle of the field. Oh, I don't. Whenever, whenever he's in the game, it's for a reason. That's the one guy that you don't want to give up a, a uncontested touchdown to. Especially uh, as a defender, you should know he's in the game, he's getting the ball or something. Because we, we never ran him as a decoy. If he was in the game, he was getting the rock some kind of way. <laughs> I mean, he's I mean, he by himself. He's naked. That, 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 that's unacceptable. That that was unacceptable yeah. by Penn State. Nobody home. Nobody home. Big game. That's great. Oh, look at that. Big Zach. Oh. Uh. Uh, come on, A-Train. Give me a block, A-Train. Yeah. Oh, yeah. What was the A-Train doing? He bought a ticket to the game watching the show? Out the back. There it is. Boom. Tooman. How unstoppable was Tooman, though? Man, that whole bank of tight ends. You know, Tooman, Camby, Shea. Oh, I mean, real. You can line those guys up anywhere, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. And, and that's, you know, one thing I, you know, give, give uh, Chris and uh, Howard and Floyd, uh, you guys were good blocking backs. Right, yeah. and you guys would actually go hit somebody. Yeah, the, um, that's what happens yeah. when you have to play your first season on on kickoff team. <laughs> <laughs> if you saw yeah, you get, playing on kickoff you get hard. Team year, right. we hey. all we already proved we were pretty hard. I got one for y'all, Coach Herman. Got that that zone blitz package from the Pittsburgh Steelers. And they banned him from the facility. <laughs> he jacked them for those tapes, as you saw Dahani and uh, Sam and them will run that That's little uh, nice. wham, wham blitz. But we had mastered the zone blitz. Robbie, what about that interception? Oh, I told no. you. We lined up. And Robbie, I was like, slide out and jam them for me. And then pick yep. it up. <laughs> exactly what happened. He came up, he, he passed me on the butt. He says, hey, take two steps out and jam him, get him out of his lane. I wonder what Joe Pod said to that uh, that coach when he asked him. That's a touchdown on the other side. He's like, ah, maybe I should have taken the trade. <laughs> Look at that whole guy. Look at that. She's looking kind of fast right there. Shallow cuts, baby. Shallow cuts setting them up. When the spats go on, baby, good things happen. <laughs> See, yeah. Lloyd called off the dogs, too. Lloyd didn't really want to run it up because I believe this was Joe Pa's worst home loss, uh, maybe loss period, if, if I do my research. But but at this point, they gave up, and then Curtis Enos decided he wanted to play football in the fourth quarter when when, when nobody felt like tackling him because the game was over because we really wanted to shut him out. But, you know, Jim stopped blitzing. And then we were just trying to milk the clock in that fourth quarter. But 31-0 yeah. in the middle of the third in Happy Valley? Unheard of. And it was number two in the Prime country. time. Prime time. Right? There it is. Well, it, was, it was quiet as a church mouse out there. Oh, God, yeah, it was. This game here, man, this one was just different. It was just classic Ohio State, Michigan. This was great. Yeah, I got I'm pretty sure nobody went to class that week. Antoine Winfield knocked me out, so I have no recollection of what happened in the game. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened, Chris. <laughs> Look at the train, though. People don't understand the train was a good kick returner, good receiver, could pass yep. block. You know, he was – he. I mean, that, that freshman class really helped us out, especially at running back and then yep. in our secondary for sure. With for, his, the biggest the was, he was for as big as train was, he was real shifty. He had great feet. Great vision. People don't understand that we led the Big Ten in time of possession. It had a lot to do with our offense, but special teams as well, too. We played on a short field due to turnovers, but also because we got off the field. But And then this guy right here. Hey, this the block. Moment, Watch the block. Oh, maybe not that oh, one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 
And this this might be when Antoine Winfield puts me out the game. No, no, no. I give you all a fun fact. Not one receiver caught a pass, true receiver. It was all tight ends and running back. Antoine Winfield had 11 tackles in the first half. And that Katsumori wasn't bad either. Sam, you, yeah. how'd you yeah. feel about Katsumori, Sam? You thought he was legit? I, I like it, man. You know, a lot of people, um, oh, he's a prime. And that's it right there, Sam. That's yeah. when Chris got his lights turned off right there. <laughs> He got his bell <laughs> run. He know where he's at. <laughs> hey, look. I took my helmet. The helmet. I, was the game. Yeah, yeah. Out of the game. I, <laughs> I went off to the side. I said, listen, man, something ain't right. And I don't want to be the guy that cost us a day. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, that's it. People don't understand it. This Ohio State team was young, but they were good, man. I mean, they were good, especially on defense. And uh, to, to this 97 team's credit, I think we beat two teams in the top five. Like four teams in the top ten. So Robbie, when you talked about that schedule, and this yeah. was the, this was the most obvious play. When every time Charles lined up outside in trips on third and long, it was a fifteen yard dig across the oh, middle. Every time, every time. <laughs> every and I don't know that anybody ever covered it. That should have been a yeah. yeah, but yeah, I mean, if you go back and you go back in the beginning, it was, we were what eighteenth or twentieth preseason. Yeah. And I think our schedule was top top three, you know, on on uh, toughest schedule. I mean, I think that's why we got discounted after eight and four seasons. And it came into this, and you know, you got a young team, you got a, you know some new coaches. Um, they, I mean, nobody gave us a snowball's chance in hell of competing for a national championship. Ooh, Damon Moore it wasn't Colorado number one when we opened the season. Ooh. Colorado was ranked number one, right? Yeah, it, it was a couple of different polls, but they was one like in the Sports Illustrated. Are they really? Yeah, they were number one in the Sports Illustrated. Sport News, one of them. They were terrible. <laughs> hey, how'd that work out? I remember when Lee Corso told me at the golf uh, golf album, he told me and Charles that we couldn't check their receivers. He was oh, like, really? Yeah, he, he had his pencil and everything. Not so fast. And he said, whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. and I said, oh, okay. All right, buddy. We had a lot of unsung heroes. James Hall, longtime NFL guy, underrated coming out of high school. Dre Weathers. He's a good player. Big, big Renis. I mean, it's right. the right mix of guys. Here's your, Here's your block. Watch these blocks, man. I mean, guys like Kevin Bryant. Who's that? Pat McCall. Sweaty, were you out there too? Ray Jackson. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think I was on the field for this one. I mean, those freshmen, man, showed up on special teams and Kevin Bryant. Charles, Charles, Charles said he was going. He said he was going to strike the pose, but he was tired and everybody jumped on. Why Diallo and Pat tackle him? <laughs> he was about to hit. He was about to strike the pose. I mean, how unbelievable is it for this guy? To do this in this game, the same sideline as as Desmond, right? And so still in the face. Game. Like it's just, I mean, you, you talk about destiny and fate. It was yep. just, you know, it was it was supposed to be like this. This is everything that was it was supposed to happen. And he's from Ohio, like Desmond. I mean, like Desmond, right? yeah, just you know, crazy. At, yeah, if we win this game at that point. This man had the Heisman locked up over Peyton and everybody. Best player on the best team. Normally is how it goes. You know, at least it should be. But Ohio State stayed in it, though, because we had them 20 to zip, but then they faked this punt. Yeah. They almost had a pick six, too. But, I mean, this this game, hey, fun fact. I asked Fred Jackson, I said, hey, if we go up another touchdown, can I run the ball? He was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, let me go over the top like Billy Sims uh, a one time against the Buckeyes. And then next thing you know, they came out and threw this option pass, got back, you know, start moving the ball. Look at D. Miller. That's who they should have been going to instead of Boston. Why D had Charles beat right here. He got him right there. Stanley Jackson. I coach a little bit Stanley now too. He's still turning the ball over. <laughs> <laughs> that, was still- big, that was a big player right there too, Ray. Yeah. Where's, my, where's the celebration pillar? Hey, remember Charles oh, on the celebration tape? Huge play right there. <laughs> That was a big time play. I tell you what, yeah, because Tommy was late, he wasn't going to get there. The um, 
Uh, great recovery. Ball was late. He had him on that first step, right? Yeah, yeah, Ball was late. And D. Miller to this day is like, man, I had Charles. I was like, no, you didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> watch Dre Weathers. Flint Towns on. See, look, look, watch. Stanley threw the ball right to Dre, man. Bam. I had him too, bro. I, I wanted the sack, but I was so happy I didn't get the sack. Well, <laughs> you, you and me both. You and me both. I already take that sick. I came, I came back and tripped over nothing. Fell, you know, fell at his leg. I see you watch. right there. Right here. Watch. Coming down, and somebody catches my leg. I get back I up. What I you had know? him, Ray. I thought I had yeah. him. <laughs> Sam, you remember in films, Herm, I think Herm's probably sitting between the two of us. He like checks left, checks right, and says, yeah, yeah, good miss. I <laughs> know. But they were never out of it. I mean, give Ohio State credit. It was 20 to zero. No. And then they just found a way to get back in it and with the ball. Like, I mean, it's coming in 2014 right here. Should have picked this one off. Should have, should have. Glenn Steele just dominated in that fourth quarter, too. Yeah, he killed it, didn't he? That, that, front, that front five. Really, really front seven. There it was. Oh, no. All Ohio State did was just through curl routes, just like that. That's why everybody's all over it. Yeah. I mean, there was nothing. There was nothing. Uh, Watch how many guys are around this pass right here. <laughs> <laughs> That's how scouts out. Sorry, Coop. That was a big win, man. Beat Ohio yeah. State. Finish yeah. off the regular season. Clinch to Heisman. Heisman. You know, the, the, the biggest thing also is because we always spoiled Ohio State's chances of winning a national championship, right? Mm-hmm. And here they have the opportunity to ruin, you know, our chances at winning a national championship. Right. And, um, and they, didn't get it, they didn't get it done. Man, this this was a great trip. Just just the whole two weeks was just switching hotels, the per diem, L.A. Per oh. diem. <laughs> First time there. Yeah. First time there. Fast track. Yeah. Fast track that night. And people don't understand, Ryan Leaf and Washington State were legit. I mean, if they don't get clocked by – Arizona State, first play of the game, I should have picked it off on the crossing route right there. No, that ain't the first play of the game. We six minutes into it. I'm not watching the, the dang footage. But I think they had a good game plan too, though. Short, uh, run, throw it short. Yeah, they did. I was out of shape. I was every bit of 220 in this game. Partying, hanging out, just just – Doing couldn't. the California life? That yeah. California love, baby, it was, it was too much. Snoop Dogg and – yeah, Snoop Dogg's house and just just doing too much, man. I, <laughs> right there, see that wasn't my fault. That was cover. That was cover four. But I don't want to throw Dwayne Patman under the bus. But he was supposed to be there, and I was chasing the pass. And everybody think I gave up that touchdown. And the reverse is coming too. And then they start working on the freshman Will uh, Peterson right there. Like why? If Charles doesn't intercept this ball and we go down fourteen to zero, we can call Tyrone and the game's over. That'd have been a tough. Uh, that'd have been a tough beat. Bad. That's a poor decision right there. Rolling to your left, throwing. Sure was That sure was a pretty picture, though. Oh yeah. Tell you what. I, and that place was rocking. It was split down the middle. It was like half blue, and then you had you know. Place was on fire. fire. Charles Charles came off his man and undercut this. I don't know who Ryan Leaf thought he was, rolling left, throwing right, throwing that duck. But then Charles jumped 10 feet in the air, came off his guy. And I, I still believe, man, if they score there, yeah, we it, it, it's different. Yeah. It's, it's a different game. Yeah, we're in trouble. Because um, uh, they had – Washington State had two, three techniques that were six, seven, three hundred 300 pounds. And let me tell you, it was tough going running against uh, that front. But what we did, we didn't do all season long, was throw the ball deep. Yeah. And I don't think anybody thought we were going to come out going and, uh, going right. like that. And I mean, I Church. think it's such the streets was such an underrated receiver, and his speed was underrated. Like people, because he was a long strider, 
didn't know how fast Streets was, but Streets was fast. It was super fast. He, he, we saw it at the great time. Hands. Just great hands. We um, can't celebrate very well, but I mean, he good hands. Pounds soaking wet though, but you know he he still could he still flat on the flat on the sideline. And then here he goes again with our famous yeah. bootleg yeah. waggle. He's yeah. cooking people up. Again? And Greasy dropping them in like dropping them dimes out there. Dimes, man, I tell you. Yeah, Greasy up yeah. there. Oh boy, had an MVP game. That is for damn sure. Yeah. I mean, they look, damn like, sure. look at that high low. Oh, and then Nah, nobody in the country was going to cover that man one-on-one. And not on that route, because he just nope. – and Washington State thought they could single up and play us with no safety like that. Yeah. And, and 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 I don't think we had two games all year where we threw it deep like that. Once again, third yeah. quarter magic. Well, one of those were in the second quarter. But Lloyd used to say all the time, the mark of a great offense is you can score quick and protect the lead. And that's two things our offense did well when, when it mattered. People don't understand. We, we've yet to mention Tom Brady. He, he, in my opinion, almost won the job in 97. And I don't know if he would have did as good as Brian, but but for everything Brian had been through, he was the right leader. He was the and, – and it proved in the end. And we didn't need another first-year starter either, to be honest, in my opinion. But but um, to go into this game with his dad calling it, we're up one in the fourth quarter. Oh, this thing was far from over. Oh, yeah. I mean, this was – I mean – Literally came down to the fastest two seconds of my life, right? Yeah. I mean, it, it, uh, I mean, this, I mean, Greasy's leadership, man. That that's kind of what stood out was his leadership, his demeanor. Because uh, remember, I mean, Greasy's first couple of years was rough. I remember uh, guys picking him off at practice and people being like, "Thanks, Bob." Remember, y'all used to get on Greasy about that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, so it, it was rough for Brock. And so for him to kind of come into his final year, there were, he just had a different attitude about it. Man, just look at Floyd. I'm looking at just – I'm just looking at this offensive line. We got two, three pro quarterbacks. I mean, we got three NFL tight ends, 31 pros, mm-hmm. legitimately, I think, on that team. Yeah. Uh, exactly. uh, at, at least 31 that I can remember off the top of my head, but – I mean, and then the camaraderie and just that – talk about Notre Dame, Iowa, Michigan State, Penn State, Wisconsin, Ohio State. We were ready for whatever Washington that, State – That was a gauntlet, that's for sure. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah. I think one of the things that helped us too, though, was that uh, Michael Black got hurt. Look, look at Kobe uh, getting oh, ready. That's great. There we go. Boy, <laughs> hey, they were fast. That's great. That's that great. Uh, 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 Kobe almost popped Kobe had him, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great, great defensive stand right there. Yeah, it was. Needed that one. It's all right. You take three. Now, this drive here, Charles, Brian, look at Brian escape and then give his body up right there for the first down yep. on third down, man. That was third down, right? Yep. That was a huge play. Huge play to extend that drive. Yeah. Yep. I mean, you get in the ball with six minutes left. I don't know. But then I think we ran the ball a couple of times, and Charles had a big catch. or a, He was going to throw it back to Greasy, I think, but he kept it. Look at the train. Our offense, our offense always found a way to ice the game, man. Right, right here. Charles was supposed to throw it back, made a good decision, and kept it and got the first down. Yeah. Yeah, because we had done that. What was that, Wisconsin? We did that. That Greasy had just a like a, a huge con- line out in front of him. He had a convoy in front of him. And then Russell Shaw with the big catch right there, too. I mean, those are three critical chain big, moves. Big first down. Look at Greasy's face. Look at Greasy's face, man. Block. That's what we're talking about. Just solid. At this point, I'm on the sideline. Like, I know we're not about to kick a field goal. Because we don't want to do what, you know, happened five years ago in our own stadium. But that was a great coaching call to yeah, put yeah. so they couldn't return it. But look, they, like, Ryan like Lee. Position. <laughs> I mean. 
Now, Ray, with our defense, you got to go just 90 you just said, Give them a short field. As quick as they move the ball. You can move this game. Now, watch this. The dude going to push Charles down. I should have yeah. intercepted it right there, but I couldn't see with them dark visors on. But he pushed Charles, and the guy got his flag in his hand, waving. Yeah. Just right in front of the referee. How do you not make that call? How do you not make now, that? When, and, and look, sure, when does he grab the flag? Right, right there. He reaching for right, it. Right there, and he doesn't drop it. No, That's ridiculous. Right. People don't understand that right there could have been the game. I thought I was like, you need to tell me if we got this damn far, we about to lose yep. on this. <laughs> that would have, hey, that would have been crazy, crazy. Watch Ian Gold's speed though, right here. Watch number twenty. No, that was against Iowa when he ran down uh, Tavian Banks. That was Dre Weathers right there. My bad. You know, watch, watch these last few seconds. <laughs> they got robbed. They definitely got robbed. They should have had one more play. They should have had one more play. No, they shouldn't. They got <laughs> exactly. Not after the pass interference. <laughs> right. right. Uh, that was right. <laughs> and that was the best celebration I, I just ever. Like now, y'all were all on the podium. I I had Lambo leaped up into the crowd. Man, ever those seniors, man. man. Look, look, look at that big steal, Jansen. How sweet it is. He's like, you just won the national championship. God, still gives me chills when I see that. <laughs> Good times, man. Yeah, it is. That's the only national title we've got in 72 years. So you better live it up, boys. <laughs>